Almost 800 years ago, a military genius came out of Mongolia to conquer half a world. He was the son of Yesugai, leader of a small nomad tribe. This man of destiny, riding beside me as a young boy, was called Temujin, born to rule as the Prince of Conquerors, Genghis Khan. the chieftains of the other tribes to learn how Jamuga of the Merkits punishes those who trespass on his grazing lands. Harness the horses! It has been written in the stars that the man who takes the life of Yesugai's son shall die, and die quickly, and by his own sword. See for yourself, mighty lord. It is the mark of blood. What is he called? Temujin. Man of iron. <laughs> then I shall spare him, so that he may witness the death I give his father now. This day on, you will wear a collar. I will have a chime made to put around your neck.
Come away from him, sister. What harm has the young man done that he should have to wed a Chang? You've heard Jamuga's orders, so leave him. Besides, his father was an enemy of our tribe also. Now come away! What are you called? Bote. You will return to the camp, Princess. Go with your brothers. I take no orders from you, Jamuga. As you say, Bote. Not yet. must be taught to stay in place. Then go. Give me that. Now then, man of iron. Jamuga's brave when a man is yoked. Good luck.
Father Gene. <laughs> How did you find me? I consulted the stars. My... Hmm? Besides, Sengal showed me. Sengal? If he was able to talk, he'd tell you that he will be with us from now on. You may be chieftain of the smallest tribe of the Mongols. At least it's a start. It's a good start. <laughs> could house an army. How safe are we? The Merkits think that only spirits and ghosts could live up this high. As long as they continue to believe that, we are safe. When they discover the truth, where do we go? East or west? When that time does come, you will decide. But <clears throat> this may help you. Our world is like three Great circles. Here, to the west, Samarkand and Bokhara, the lands of the Persians. Rich nations who trade with the white-skinned Christians from beyond the desert. And here, to the east. I have not traveled east of the mountains, but I have talked with merchants from the caravans. And they have told me of the great walls and beyond them the kingdom of China. A land of great cities where people dress in silks. <laughs> Even the men and where the merchants go in search of spices and rare woods from the nations beyond the eastern seas. And here in the center. <laughs> A barren, empty circle where only Mongols live. Why should it be barren and empty when it lies in the heartland between the rich west and the richer east? Because the tribes, like the Merkits, the Salkits, the Tangles, and others, are too busy fighting amongst themselves. That's why. But if they join together... The only time that Mongols are joined together is in death. You know what you said about this being the smallest tribe in existence? It would be difficult for it to be much smaller. <laughs> then we must make it larger. <laughs>
bye bye. Sorry, kids. Now shall we see if the spirits of the wind are for us or against us. is the caravan road to Tashkent. In the old days, many battles were fought over it. But so many of the slaves were killed, there was so little profit. So, the Treaty of the Slave Trail was signed. A treaty? The Shah of Khwarizm imposed a truce. All have sworn to it. All observe it. No warrior is permitted to carry arms here. Good, then we can take our pick without fighting. Hmm? You do not understand, Temujin. A truce was signed. I did not sign it. The slaves did not sign it. But... Will there be women among the slaves? Yes, Lord. Good. My men have horses and weapons, but no women. How long do you think they will stay without women? How long will you? <laughs> <laughs> What is the meaning of this? The slave caravan is under the protection of the Shah of Khwarazm himself. Convey the thanks of Lord Temujin to the Shah. Temujin? Temujin! Katke! <laughs> My lord, I thank the four winds you found me. Chambuka was selling me for a slave. Somehow I don't see you as a slave. In any case, you're free now. You're all free. Free! I said you are all free, my sisters. To continue with this caravan, or to ride with my men back to our camp. You give them a choice? Women? Sengal, strike the fetters off these slaves. This truce has lasted a hundred years, barbarian. The Shah will have your head spiked on the city walls. Once you're dead, do you really think it matters? to Tashkent and give our thanks to the Shah. <laughs> A 
miracle. A miracle. Oh, thank you. But if you want to prove your gratitude, give me this woman, huh? But she's my wife. Oh, take another. Go on, take another woman. I'll give you a horse. Huh? <laughs> oh. I'll give you two horses. No, friend Chan. No woman will be taken against her will. But, Lord, that's what women are for. And besides, the best have already been taken. A uh, wise man does not judge a horse by its saddle markings. Come, I will choose for you. Come. Hey, do you want a husband, Katke? That? Hey, that's settled, then. Now you have many sons. It's about time you too, my lord, had thoughts of sun. The thoughts I've had in my mind are not for a holy man as you. Give me time. Take this and be Katki, bring food and clothes to the princess. Prepare another tent for me while I wash. Wash? The Lord Temujin, my lady. Stay, woman. I did not tell you to go. That was stupid of you. You do not seem like a stupid woman. I am not a stupid woman. And what did I do that you thought stupid? You gave an order that was bound to be overruled. The master who feeds his dog does not expect him to answer to the whistle of any stranger. I might have thought it of you. You treat those who serve you as dogs. Not Katke. She brought me up as a child. She did not boast about that, I promise you. My lady, anyone else listening to us now would imagine that you were trying to provoke a fight. But it always needs two to make a quarrel. Not with me, it doesn't. <laughs> I like a horse with spirit. Horses, dogs, animals, all you ever think of. I can see that was a stupid question. But if it please you, now that you are here, say what it is you came to say. I have said what I came to say, but for this. Deep in my heart, if I search for the truth, I must also say that what drove me most to do what I did is the thought of the rage and anger I have brought to Jamuga. To steal in the night the woman he had chosen to marry. Outcast! Slave! 
Soon you'll be back in a wooden yoke. For born a slave, you'll die a slave. Born a slave I never was. Born to rule the Yasugai was always in my stars. And not only one tribe, but people of many tribes were destined to follow me, to fight my battles, conquer nations. All this was in my stars. And you, you, woman, you dare provoke my anger. the first thing one gives to another. <laughs> if I wasn't so ugly looking, with all these tears, I'd know what to say to you next. I am ugly looking then. You didn't disagree with me. You see, you see. Talk too much, woman. You never give me a chance to say anything. My brothers always say that too. must be near. He knows our every movement. But we know nothing of his. His men appear from nowhere and they disappear like, like ghosts. Ghosts who will bleed like any ordinary man when they feel the headman's axe, as some of you may do, if you don't bring her back and soon. To have her stolen out of my own camp and from under the noses of all of you, from under the noses of her brothers, Brother, Sobadai, and Jebai, and Kasa. My Lord Temujin. My Lord. And my husband. No one followed you? We saw nothing but the stars, heard nothing but the rush of the waterfall. Despite the poetry, I'm glad to see you back. And you, my friend, you are welcome. And grateful, Lord. Ready to serve you, Lord. 
Superdai, you have nothing to say? Only this. The holy man. He lies. You said? I saw something as we climbed the mountainside. A glow against the sky. Your fires are banked too high. Prepare to move out. Leave all the carts but one. Move on to the east road beyond Jamuga's camp and wait there.
on our side. It'll be hours before Jamuka can reach the sky camp. He'll have Murgats from the lakes to the plains riding to join him. Who can travel faster? A horse that needs little to eat or a hundred who must forage wide? Where do we go? East. We will be across the river before dawn. men's work outside. Leave her with me. Before we are certain Jamuga has given up the chase. Then let us stop and fight. I will say when it is time to fight, not before. But how long do we keep going east, my lord? All through the winter. And if necessary, through next winter. If we keep heading east, we could end up in a land where I've heard they eat dogs. Or it might have been people. According to Gein, it is a land of great wealth. A vast empire built on knowledge and we must have knowledge. Greetings, friends. And to you, greetings, warriors. 
I'm Camling, ambassador of the emperor to the Indias, returning to our court in Peking. Returning, as you see, is a figure of speech. It seems you travel without much luck. First our Manchurian guard deserted us, then the wheel of our cart broke, then our driver stole our horses, and the cattle, tying of our company, followed after them. One might say that the winds of fortune are blowing somewhat carefully. You are in dangerous country. We have heard of one Temujin and his horsemen, fierce, violent men. We have no fear for our lives. We bear letters from our emperor. It will be far more profitable to hold us to ransom than to murder us. Why talk of ransom and murder? Sengal! Show them we mean no harm. grateful. If you would tell us what gold you require for your services. Gold, my lord? I'm not a merchant. You overwhelm me. One last kindness we must beg of you. A message to the nearest Chinese military post for horses and assistance. It is about four days' journey. But that would mean leaving you here unprotected. We have spare horses we'd be glad to lend you. Also our services as an escort. An escort? I have 200 men here, all tried and tested. And our numbers are soon to be increased. My wife, she is near her time. Then she deserves better than to ride in the open, like a herdsman. She shall have the poor comforts of our miserable and unworthy wagon. Please, we shall try to make it as serviceable as we can. Now, this Temujin you spoke of. Have no fear. This is the one column he'll never attack. I have his word for it. First child born to the tribe of Yasugai for more than 20 years. And the boy, my son. Temujin. My son, Bote. You are my wife, this is my son. You knew he would be a boy. You always said it. It had to be. How else could he follow after me? 
The day I first noticed your body growing larger, I gave orders then to shine, to have a saddle built, a small one, of course, a bow and a sword, all of which bear his name. Don't torment me. His name. My son's name. Yoki, the founder of our tribe. Yoki. Yoki. It's a pretty name. It is not meant to be pretty. It is a man's name, as befits the leader of our tribe. Only by the time he's a man, it will be a nation. If any man could ever do it, that man is Demogen of the Yesugai. Demogen of the Mongols. Men who could build this should rule the world. So our ancestors thought when they first conceived it, 2,000 miles from the great ocean to the southern mountains. But alas, now we cannot rule ourselves, let alone the world. My lord! Dear friends, soldiers of the emperor, simply reflecting the sun's rays, but it can carry messages further and faster than the swiftest horseman. Childish device, but not without usefulness. Please receive it as an unworthy gift. One drawback, however, I should point out. For reasons which will soon become apparent, it's best not to let such device fall into the hands of a woman. <laughs> Overfed bears should be no match for wolves. Remember that now. I shall ask for an audience with the Emperor. I'm sure it will be arranged. I shall be honored. The Emperor also will be honored.
I'm telling you. They're going to boil us alive and then eat us. No! No! They're only going to wash us. Wash? Must be a custom of the country. Why? I don't know, but I don't intend to find out. Well, I do. Our ambassador has told us how much he owes to your skill, bravery, and courtesy. Kamling is generous, Your Majesty. He has also told us that you are a shrewd and observant man. That is unusual. I have always believed that fighting, horses, and women were the sole interests of the men of your nation. Tribes constantly at war with one another cannot be called a nation. Then we should do nothing to discourage your quarrels. As long as you Mongols fight among yourselves, I and my people should have little to worry us. Surely a nation as rich and strong as yours has nothing to fear. Yeah. The Chinese Empire knows no such word. Then what is the purpose of the Great Wall? The wall merely ensures that civilization, knowledge, the arts as we know them, shall survive. It is there to keep what we have to ourselves, to keep people in. To keep me? <laughs> I find you profoundly entertaining. You make such direct and positive statements. You and your strong, wild men arrive in my city like a rush of wind, a fresh sort of wind. We pray to the wind. Charming. To the four winds. <laughs> better and better. We have a game of chance in which the four winds are of paramount importance. <laughs> Listen to them. Did you ever hear anything more delicate or exquisite? Then their sweet, sad song, the poetry itself could not be more profound. Do you write poetry, Temujin? I do not. I have never yet found the time. Then I shall instruct you. I myself am a poet. That is why you were sent here. And this is where you must stay, my friend. There is destiny in your coming here, believe me. When you speak of destiny, this is something I must believe. At last, we agree about something. We shall find many more things in common. Take the birds away, their chattering distracts me. We must discuss the gods to whom you pray. Primitive religions have always fascinated me. And while you exchange your knowledge of military matters, I shall instruct you in the art of poetry and painting. I find it difficult to control my impatience, Your Majesty. Take it. It grows heavy. The one in white. Have her raise her head. Tonight I am in the summer palace. Have her brought to me at midnight.
Prisoners. Make no mistake about it. We're prisoners. In an ivory cage, of course. We should never have headed for the east. What else did the Emperor say, Temujin? That's what he didn't say. That there are over 2,000 men on the walls of Peking and that our horses have been taken. Just what do you think we should have done, Subodai? You're always so quick with advice. It is what I have always said. If we had not run but stopped and fought, Jamuga, none of us would have to be here now. None of us! You have a strong right arm, Subodai. And I like to know it is at my side, but your mouth is young and it needs training. <laughs> Enough training, my brother. You may yet become my strong right arm, for I have need of another. This peacock, this emperor, has overlooked one thing. There is much to be learned here, much that can be used later. And if this is a prison, I I can think of worse hardships. Yes, I know I've never eaten so well. As for me, I even enjoy being clean. <clears throat> it's not the being clean that you enjoy, it's the washing. Well, the women are beautiful, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> all of which the Emperor hopes you will learn to appreciate. Until soft living is all you're fit for. Forte is right. I do not want any of our men fat and useless. We will all exercise every morning for a start. He's dead. Just a reminder for you to carry. Look! Over there! A signal! What are they saying? I'm not certain, but it must be urgent. Take the map away. It's not only inaccurate, it's inartistic. Stop them weeping and wailing. I want advice, not pandemonium. The situation occasions alarm. It does not merit hysteria. A ragged army of a few thousand Manchurians have captured the city of Hope, that is all. Until we also consider that 6,000 Imperial cavalry were routed and put to flight. But that is nothing new. No doubt in our lifetime it will happen again. Prince Temujin, you and your kinsmen seem amused at the news of our disaster. Not at the news, Your Majesty, only at the way you receive it. A few thousand Manchurians are of little account, admittedly. But their example might be serious. Others might also realize that the Great War means nothing. I wish to speak to my friend Prince Temujin alone. Bring hot wine and tea, and do you stay and keep us company? This is how I relax in moments of disaster and anguish. I find painting has a soothing and calming property. I see that you paint very well. You are no beginner. He is hinting that we are accustomed to disaster. I fear we've underrated our friend. He has an unexpected gift of subtlety. Ah, the Shamsu is a rice wine of great delicacy. May I offer you some? Uh, for me, the tea. For me, the wine. 
I was not suspicious of it, Majesty, but I have forbidden it to my men to drink, as you probably have heard. I have heard. And if my curiosity does not greatly offend, why? Because I wanted my men to be ready for a day such as this. Ah. Please to continue. I am listening. Please, Just that the fate of an emperor is of small importance compared to a poem by So Ling or a painting by my distinguished ancestor, Mao Kung. You were saying? You would save much time if you let me say something. That means you have something to offer? What? These Manchurian invaders. You would like them destroyed as soon as possible. Unfortunately, my army has melted away. I will raise you another one. Mongols? How much? You mean money? What else do soldiers fight for? Large chest of gold for each of my three brothers-in-law, so that I can send them out to recruit only the best men. How could I be sure I was not just replacing one army of invaders with another? You cannot be sure. There is a solution, great one. I myself, who know him better, would trust Temujin. But if he were to leave his wife and son as hostages in your keeping... I agree. See that Prince Temujin has all the gold he needs. And we will offer a special reward for which one of your wife's brothers does most to help us. There is no need. It is a custom and a charming one to announce the reward before the service is performed. In our experience, it often helps with the accomplishment. Have the court brought back. I wish them to see how tired and exhausted their emperor is, working devotedly in the service of his people. I will do so, great emperor, but as Temujin and I have so much to do. Very well. In any case, you've both seen the state I'm in. Where is he taking us? The horses are ready. Why can't we be on our way? Because the Emperor wants you to take a memory with you, a vision that will bring you back all the sooner. Look at the picture. The Princess Chin Yu, Emperor's youngest daughter. Whichever one of you returns with the best company of horsemen, you shall have her. Is there any reason we can't start now?
Subodai. Ah! Teach her to be a woman while I'm away. Ah! Troops will lead the attack. Up through there. It is only fitting. We have the honor. You will not attack with any great success. You will then fall back. Retreat? You have had some experience of that, I imagine. But we lose face. Better to lose face than your head, as the unsuccessful defender of Hope has apparently done. When you fall back through here, my Mongols will fall on them from both flanks. Then you will lead your troops back again at my command. Now get your men into position. I will tell you when to move forward. Kamuga. choose. Either you live to follow the banner of Temujin, 
Or you die with your leaders. Now show them to me. These men who led you into rebellion against your empire. Subodai. You will pray for death, and the chang you wear grows heavier and heavier, and the laughter it brings grows louder and louder. And you, Temujin, will live to regret this day, when you have held the blade from my neck. Barbarians, the Mongol who led the Manchurians. And it is fitting that his punishment be far greater than for those whose heads I have brought you. The Lord Jamuga, Your Majesty. In celebration, of the Lord Temujin's great victories over the Manchurian rebel invaders, it is our will that from this day on, he will be called the Prince of Conquerors, the Genghis Khan. <laughs> Lord, we meant it only to be a salute to your victory. How did the thunder crash at your command? It is a simple alchemist trick, but we use too much black powder. Black powder? Come to me tonight and bring some of your powder with you. I want to see how you make it thunder. They make lightning this time, but no thunder. That is something we've discovered in their experiments. It thunders only when confined in a container. Then it can hurl a stone even further than the longest bow shot. Shall they demonstrate? So far, you have used this only to make noises of welcome? And sometimes to make pretty effects in fire and sparks to amuse the children. We have many variations. I can tell what you are thinking. It is your duty, both as a holy man and as a man of wisdom, to 
profit from all this knowledge. Do you want something? Hmm? Give me that blue horse, will you? And I tell you again, it has to be done. As long as this man lives, none of his tribe will join with you. They can't. You know their laws, and our laws too. To kill him would be an act of mercy. Oh, I'm not talking of mercy, but of common sense. Listen to me, Temujin. Hear me well, and one day remember that I warned you. There are only two things you can do with Jamuka. Put him under the ground for all time, or put him at your side and have the Merkits ride with you. Are you out of your mind, woman? Jamuga, who killed my father, kept me in chains? Or is all this forgotten, all forgiven? And you, the scar he put on your back, has that also disappeared with the passing of time? Neither the scar on my back, nor the memories of how it came there. No, Temujin. These I don't forget. Nor the hatred I have for this man. And yet, to help you make what you want come true, to make our people into a nation, I could set aside my hatred, because it would be necessary. Then it shows how little you know of me to think that I could too. I know you better than you think. Break it across your knee, Temujin. Now the two pieces, together. I know what you are trying to tell me. That we are only strong when we are undivided. And one day, you will listen. Is it possible for you to be a Mongol first, and only secondly, Jamuga, chief of the Merkit tribe? Has the Chang also smothered your tongue? Not yet. Perhaps if I wear it as long as you did. Once you took the Chang off my neck, perhaps I can do the same for you. The price? There is no price. Only a dream accomplished. A unified Mongol nation, not just separate warring tribes. With the Lord Temujin at its head. The stars have written it. Gein, my holy man, tells me this is true. <laughs> a Mongol nation will come, Jamuga. It will. But if the Merkids ride at our side, it will come sooner. The Merkids need no other tribes to ride beside them. Behind them, I should say. All others fear us already. Our power, our strength. 
Even my death cannot destroy that. Is your thinking so small that you can only think about yourself? And what do you think of then with this wild dream of yours of a Mongol nation? And apart from these stars you speak of, what else makes you think you have been chosen to rule? You will die carrying that chank, Jamuga. Unless I have your word now that your Merkits ride with us the day we leave China. And that day is soon. If I were free from this yoke, my hands would still your jackal breath forever. So will I! Put this animal back in his cage. Kremling, have you no heart to interrupt these exquisite little songbirds? The interruption brings present news. Oh, very well. Come here, my little sparrow. Come and sit beside me. Go on, if you must. Genghis Khan has arranged a demonstration tonight for you and your court to thank you for all your kindnesses over the years. Don't tremble, child. Although divine, I'm also human. And as a farewell. Farewell? Did you know about this? They wish to return to their own lands. I cannot allow it. I have told you many times of my dream of a united people. And should it take force to accomplish it, I have the men now. And I have trained them well. And I bought them, and you are my general, Genghis Khan. And their leader. Kamling, you are the Khan's friend, not his only one, I hasten to add. Do you reason with him for his own good? The emperor wants to remind you of your first meeting, what then was said, that the great wall of China is to keep people in and that there are 3,000 armed men on the Peking walls, and that we are still prisoners. Prisoners? Friends? And what sort of talk is this among friends? I want no more of it. I've had a terrible day. Headaches, all this catawalling. Get away, you unmutable little brutes, all of you. And now this talk of leaving me. You've, you've cut me to the heart. That was not my intention, I assure you. I knew you would do nothing to hurt me. But my demonstration? There's no reason to abandon it. We have another saying, another way of suggesting you make the best of things. It's very apt. Better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. As you say, very apt. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, you will have him watched. I thought you would be pleased to see Genghis Khan and his horsemen ride away. So that one day they may ride back as conquerors. The Khan knows us for what we are. Rich, but regrettably weak. What will you do? The barbarian Temujin brought back from the Manchurian battle. Jamuga. Jamuga. Have him brought to me. In secret. message said it was urgent. We have no secrets. Least of all from her. This is most difficult for me, my lord. My royalties must not be misunderstood, but they are for my country, for China, not for any individual, no matter how important or mighty he may be. I would say these are the sentiments of an honorable man. The emperor worries. He fears your leaving. He is wrong. 
He and all in China should fear your staying. He is a man of subtlety, however, and there is another solution. Your people stay, you go. On a very long journey alone. You express yourself beautifully, but who is to stab me in my back? The Emperor also understands what would happen to our people if one of them should strike you down. And so... You have walked too far to stop now. Our people would be blameless if your assassin were a Mongol. Imrakit. Jamuga. Bring him here. It would be better if I were not present. You will stay, my friend. You will stay. You'd like this key, eh, Jamuga? Why not? With the Chang off, you might have had a chance to save your right arm. Assassin! Cut him down. One man who can gather all the merkits against us. The one man! Call off your men. Get them ready for tonight's celebrations. With Jamuga still at large? He will do nothing now. His own escape is more important to him than my life. And no more failures this time, Subodai. Our plan for tonight must meet with success. I'm sorry you will miss tonight's celebrations. Perhaps you can see some of the fireworks from here. of the human mind. The Chinese mind, of course. I knew it from the first day. My profound felicitations. And now for our final display. Final? Perhaps you would like to set it off. It would be an honor.
This last one will be very special. You have saved the best for the last, a wise move, a touch of true delicacy. As you yourself said, better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. This will be our camp. My lord. How long do you intend to hold me prisoner? Not prisoner. As your late emperor said to me while plotting my murder, you are here as a friend. In that case, I can only ask that my death be a swift one. We will not speak of dying, friends. Only a fool destroys a wise man. You will sit at my right hand and you will counsel me. And I will listen to your words. And if your words be wise, they will make me wise, too. I will accept this honorable appointment, because I'm happy to serve a lord whose star grows brighter while the sun of China fades. In addition, I suspect I will find the work more agreeable than death. My first advice is to strike swiftly to take what is left of China before someone else can do so. Word of this success will bring other tribes to you in increasing numbers. In the meantime... In the meantime, we shall move westward. With China safely in the hands of Jebai, Subodai will move north into Russia, while Kassa drives south to bring India to her knees. Samarkand and Bukhara will fall easily to us, and Persia will be ours for the taking. And the Mongols shall rule from the heartland.
from the very center of the world. And Jamuga? The Merkits will still have their chance to join us. Mongol must not fight Mongol again. Your ambition destroys your honor. Is the man who raped our sister to go unanswered? Is the father of his firstborn son to go unpunished? Look, he is my son. The man who lets personal revenge take precedence over the tasks before him will never complete those tasks, and he will lose all that he has gained. No! My word is the law. I'll get on with my work. Shabudai is a small man. They're all small men. Why are there no men of stature? No man of imagination. It is not easy to match the true conqueror. Perhaps once in many centuries does the world produce a man with the power and the will equal to his vision and destiny. Perhaps Temujin, Genghis Khan, is such a man. This was not said in flattery, my lord, I promise you. In the next few years, the Mongol hordes of Genghis Khan seized all of China north of the Yellow River, carved its way across the Ural Mountains into Russia, and plunged southward across the borders of India. Having conquered almost all of Asia, Temujin turned his armies towards Samarkand and Bukhara. And when they were his, the great Persian Empire of Khwarezm lay before him, ready for his sword. Come now, Jamuga. You are an old general. You know very well that even if I agreed to join forces with you, you could never hope to defeat this Genji Jing, this Khan. No one else has. No one else has an army equal in strength to our combined forces. We will be more than enough to slaughter him. Uh, I have no desire for slaughter. Lamb eats for slaughter. This meat is very sweet and succulent. No, no, I hear more and more men flock to his banner every day. <laughs> Defeated men, weaklings, the first to run in battle. But I have not offended him. He has offended you. Years ago, that caravan on the slave trail, his violation of the treaty. Oh, that was when... That was when the supply from the east was cut off. No spices, no jewels, no women. And remember this. Your country lies directly in his path. Your only hope of saving Khwarezm, of saving yourself, is to align yourself with me. There is only one way to stop this violator of treaties. You and I will ride together against this Genghis Khan. We will crush this wolf, this thirster after blood, this corrupt defiler of women, this scavenger. Your serenity speaks words of wisdom. A gift shall seal our bargain. One of my daughters? Two? My gift to you will be the head of this Genghis Khan. The army 
armies in the Shah and Jamuga are joined and on the march. They have already crossed the Alu River. Then the time is here, finally. <laughs> Certainly. There can be no mistake. There's no mistake. The last word placed him five days away. We will have the high ground. He will have to come to us. We will have the high ground, you said. They will have to come to us, you said. Are they not doing so? An emissary with a white flag. Well, somehow I do not feel they've come to surrender. Not with Genghis Khan holding the high ground, but with our troops outnumbered. Are you suggesting that we surrender, then? I'm suggesting nothing. I'm only regretting the fact that I allowed myself to be dragged into this foolish and obviously risky adventure. To conquer, one has to take risks. At my age, I do not need to take risks. If we... If I survive this day, it will have taught me a lesson. That a man can be too clever. Your words mean more than they say. I had hoped to see Mongol kill Mongol, and so wipe themselves out, and rid Khwarezm from all danger. Instead of which? I find myself on an uncomfortable horse, in a drafty place, and in a very dangerous situation. Well, perhaps this emissary brings good news. I'll bear greetings from the Genghis Khan to the Lord Jamuga. Greetings. <laughs> and I thank you deeply for observing my flag of truce. The Lord Genghis Khan would wish to talk with the Lord Jamuga. Talk? What would we have to talk about? I'm only the humble emissary sent to arrange a meeting. There will be no meeting, no talk. Does the Lord Jamuga fear the spoken word? Tell this jackal you obey. My talking is done with a lance or a sword. I repeat, does the Lord Jamuga fear the spoken word? And these spoken words are to take place in the center of his camp? The Genghis Khan will ride forward with an escort of six. Then, finally, alone. The same privilege is yours. Can he be trusted? The word of the Lord Genghis Khan can always be trusted. I trust him enough to remain here as hostage until you return. And let it be so. fitting that you have come back to your own land to die. But it is not fitting that the Mongols should deliver the death blow. You 
still sing the same song, Temujin. Many voices carry it now. Not the markets. Outcast. I asked for this meeting in the hope that Mongol would not shed Mongol blood. Also that you might still join with me to spread the name of the Mongol nation. The Merkits are warriors, not a group of women to become part of a herd. We say and do as we want, and we take what we need from anybody. I promise you this, Jamuga. The Merkits will ride as part of the Mongol nation, or their land will be razed to the ground, razed so that not even a lame horse would stumble walking across it. I must talk with the Shah. Counsel is always worthwhile. We will send you our answer with Cam Ling. <laughs> And the men grow impatient, my lord. Better that than the spilling of Mongol blood. Not one of our horses will put one foot forward until I have Jamuga's answer. My lord! Look!
of you. <laughs> and you first, outcast. Sengal! Stay where you are. Enough, Jamuga. Let there be peace. Uh, with you? Never! And there will be no chying this time either, Jackal. If you have the courage to stand up alone to me, Jamuga, the man who slaughtered your tribe, the father of your first son. Is this the man you would follow? Is this the leader who would unite the nation of the Mongols? You have passed your own sentence. A Mongol jewel? And when you are dead, Jamuga, your men will ride with mine.
Untie any prisoners. If any of the Merkit tribe would leave us, let them go now. Tribes come together as one people. But it is my sons who will make our nation great. Show my people their leaders. <laughs> And until they are old enough to lead, it is my wife and her two brothers who shall speak for them, shall guide them to walk straight. And for they, who I have always loved, turn me towards the wind. I want that the gods should see me in the face. Years for weeping. I want you to see me as you have always. Always your hand to help me. As you said, it's always the first thing you hold out to another. So it was that Temujin, the Genghis Khan, was dead. But not the tide he set in motion. His dream conquered even after death. His sons rolled westward into the Hungarian plains, burned a path to the borders of Egypt. One grandson founded the Mughal dynasty of India, while another was the great Kublai Khan, emperor of China. And when the conquest was finished, half the population of the world was contained in the Mongol Empire. The empire born in the imagination of the prince of conquerors, Genghis Khan.